The notes that we take are only valuable if we use them. This is why you might have noticed that in this channel, I like to steer clear from methodologies. I think many of them were made by people whose full-time jobs it is to come up with new methodologies and to sell them in some way or another. I have a different reason for taking notes. I take notes because I need to. I need to learn new things quickly and produce technical content in my full-time job as a developer advocate. So if you're more interested in practical tips rather than abstract theories, then you might want to stick around for this video. I'm gonna show you some concrete strategies that I use for making my notes actually useful. I think the main difference and nuance between personal knowledge management or PKM and the kind of note taking that we did in school is that PKM separates note taking into two different parts. The first is writing the stuff down that we want to learn. And the second is incorporating them into our vault or a personal wiki or whatever you want to call it. Personally, when I take my initial notes, they're usually stream of consciousness style. So I'm not really thinking about using full sentences. They're usually in bullet form and I'm just writing down whatever I've heard, spelling and grammar be damned. This stage is for me about just understanding what the person is saying, whether that's from a YouTube video or a podcast or a book. This might not come as a surprise to you because I've talked about the service a lot, but I also heavily use Readwise to import highlights that I've made in books or podcasts or tweets or a bunch of different sources. Having those initial notes gives me something to start with. One of my sources for highlights these days is Brilliant. Brilliant is a sponsor of this part of the video, but I wouldn't even talk about them if I didn't genuinely like their product. Brilliant is an online learning platform that is really good at taking these broad, complex topics and then distilling them into more digestible lessons. And I really love their focus on practical uses for maths and sciences. Here I am trying to paint a flower in their Python course, but I'm actually writing real code that sometimes has to do with their instructions and sometimes I just like to play around. I probably wouldn't like Brilliant as much if it weren't so easy to take notes on their stuff. I click on the reader extension in my browser Chrome, and then I can highlight different parts that I find interesting in a lesson and even take some notes. In this one on artificial neuron networks, I was thinking about my existing Obsidian note on artificial intelligence. So I made a note of that. You may notice that I'm using the Obsidian link syntax and neither Brilliant nor Readwise recognizes that, but I know that all these notes are gonna end up in Obsidian anyway. Sometimes if I don't want to take notes or highlight within the browser itself while I'm going through the lesson, then I can do it in Readwise Reader. Through the Readwise official plugin in Obsidian, anything I highlight or any notes that I take are automatically synced to my Obsidian Vault. So just to show you what that looks like, here is the imported page and imported highlights from the lesson computationally modeling the brain. And here's the other imported page on computation models of the neuron. You'll see that I also have a link to artificial intelligence here. And because these links are now referring to real Obsidian notes, I can hover over them and see the contents or open them up on the side. I try to take notes on everything that interests me, and that turns out to be a lot of things. Luckily, Brilliant has heaps of lessons and they're adding to them all the time and rotating them, so it's always fresh and new. If you are as interested in a variety of subjects as I am, then go to brilliant.org slash NicoleVDH to get a free trial and then also 20% off of your premium annual subscription, should you choose to continue. Thanks, Brilliant. Once I have the initial notes in my vault, then the next step is to incorporate them into the rest of my notes. And I call that processing my notes. Processing is called by different names, depending on the methodology you're following. I don't really follow any of those methodologies. So when I say processing my notes, I basically mean paraphrasing and abstracting ideas out of what I've learned. I also mean creating new notes and updating existing ones that happen to be on the same topic. And then I also mean creating links and situating those new ideas within what I already have in my other notes. 
for paraphrasing and abstracting ideas from what I've learned, I like to have the summary metadata, which I pull in through data view queries sometimes. This is like a one sentence summary of a note. This is a note that I created for a course or a specific lesson in a course called Mastering YouTube by Matt Diavella. I also, as you can see, like to have the summary section. This is a call out. So I'm using the abstract one here, but you could really use any type of call out. Just so you know, to create a call out, you can do control P or command P in my case, and then type call out, and you can insert that call out there. And there are a variety of different things that you can use. I tend to use abstract for these summaries. And that's what that looks like. I like these call out blocks because they stand out from the rest of the note. But sometimes even within the note, I'll add different call outs. This is a collapsible call out. So when I click on this arrow here, it reveals a little bit more of a note on this note, kind of like a way of meta note taking. I also like to use them to summarize sections of the note like I did here. This is a great way to break the notes up. And if I just scroll through this note, it's easy to see the things that I highlighted. Another plugin that I use for summarizing ideas is the Excaladraw plugin. So this is an image that has been embedded from Excaladraw. But if I want to open it up in Excaladraw, I can just click on that. And this is what it looks like. So each of these are things that I can individually change. I use Excaladraw to consolidate ideas in my mind that aren't as easily expressed in pure text. In this case, this is a comparison between tools, and I was trying to map the terminologies between the two. Along the lines of Excaladraw, but maybe when I want to blend something that is very visual, like a drawing from Excaladraw and text, then I'll use advanced slides. This is my note on the difference between instrumentation and eBPF. If you want to see how I made this, I actually did a whole video about it, but there's some text here, but I'm also embedding images that I made in Excaladraw. And if you're wondering what these lines are, this is because even though this is readable as a note like this, and I'm embedding part of a note here as well, this also functions as a slide presentation presentation, a short one, one that's out of context without any introduction or outro. But if I do command P or control P to get to the command pane and select show slide preview, then it'll open up here. And if I put that here, then I can go through it just like I would any other slide presentation. I do a lot of presentations and sometimes this is a very useful way of testing myself. If I can't talk about something, then maybe I don't really quite understand it. The next part of processing is creating notes or updating existing ones. For example, let's say that I updated this performance testing page and now when I have a look at it, it's quite long. The first thing that I'd probably do is open up the outline. Outline is a core plugin that you can enable. And once you've got it, you can open it up by going to the command pane and selecting show outline, but you'll see I already have a shortcut for it. So I can just do command shift O and there it is here on the right. So I can see the outline of this particular note and this just helps me understand the flow of it. And in this case, maybe there are things here that I could really move out. For example, I talk here about the observer effect in performance testing, which is fine. But what if I found out that I have a different note? Let's create one now and let's call it pruebas de carga, which is performance test in Spanish. So let's say I I have some other information here, but I really think that this one should be merged into this. Now, obviously there's only one line here, but imagine that this one is as long as the performance testing note. I might want to merge them in that case. There's also a core plugin for that. So if we go into settings and core plugins, make sure that you've got note composer enabled and that merges, splits and refactors notes. So let's try that out. So I'm going to go into this pruebas de carga one, right click on it. And then I'm going to select merge entire file with performance testing. When I do that now, there's only going to be a single file. And if we scroll all the way to the bottom, you'll see that where 
I had some other information here from Pruebas de Carga, now it's in this note. If I had any other information, it would be there as well. But let's delete that since we don't really want that there. Another thing that I really like is the Note Refactor plugin, which is a community plugin. Maybe this explanation is a little too long. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of it. And with the Note Refactor plugin installed and enabled, I'm going to hit Command P and Note Refactor. And you'll see that there are different options depending on what I want to do. You can experiment with these settings, but the one that I most often use is the one that I have a hotkey for, and that's to extract the selection to the new note with the first line in the selection as the file name. So if I click on that, then you'll see that it created a new file called the observer effect in performance testing. And then in the performance testing note, where there was a whole section, there is now just a single link. So I'm going to make this a heading because I still want it to be on the same level as like this next one. And then in the observer effect, now I've offloaded this section to another note that kind of makes this performance testing note a little easier to navigate. So if I open up the outline now, each of these sections is pretty lean. I like to separate notes out when I just feel like a note is getting so long that it's unwieldy. For me, processing notes also means adding new links and trying to situate the new notes into the rest of my vault. So also establishing some sort of hierarchy or relationship is what I do in this last part. One way I like to do that is by using the Backlinks Core plugin and you can enable it or make sure that it's enabled by going to Core Plugins and then and then toggling this over. Backlinks shows you linked and unlinked mentions of this page that you've got open. So if I click on this one, then I can render the markdown and see those notes more clearly. And these are all notes where I've linked to performance testing explicitly. But there's also an unlinked mentions part where Obsidian shows other notes where I might have mentioned the words performance testing, but I didn't explicitly link to it. Looking through these backlinks helps me determine whether there are other notes in my vault that I need to update based on the new information that I've just learned. Another plugin that I've been messing around with lately is the Strange New Worlds Community plugin. You might have been wondering why I have these numbers next to some of the links, and that's the Strange New Worlds plugin. The number next to the link is how many other notes I have in my vault that are pointing to this one. This is the same as using the Backlinks Core plugin, but with the Strange New Worlds plugin, I can also see this in a hover window. And it's just a little easier to more casually do this. When I use Backlinks, I'm only seeing Backlinks for the page that I've got open, which is performance testing. But with the Strange New Worlds plugin, I have that for every link in this page. So it's a lot easier to deal with. If I click on the number, then it opens up the Strange New Worlds tab on the right side pane here, which is just a little easier if I want to keep this open. Another difference in this plugin from the Backlinks plugin is that if I then go to some other page like scalability, the backlinks would have changed. So now in linked mentions, it's showing pages that link to scalability because that's what I've got up right now. But the Strange New Worlds plugin is still showing that one that I specifically opened up. This helps me figure out what maybe I need to flesh out a little bit more. Like why is it that I have 12 for scalability, but only five for latency, even though I put load testing in that bucket, which has 130 mentions. So by looking at these numbers, sometimes it gives me an idea of what I need to research or what I need to just spend some time writing. It also gives me an idea of relationships that I need to set. I do that using the Excalibrain plugin. In case you had noticed on the side pane here, I do always have Excalibrain up. It's always open on this little side window and I can scroll into it anytime I want. I made a whole video on Excalibrain, so I won't go too much into detail here, but suffice it to say that I use it to define explicit and implicit relationships between my notes. I haven't quite done this for all of my notes, but since I'm here, I'm going to do this for this note. Okay.
So I've just shown you some of the plugins that I use for processing my notes, namely to paraphrase and summarize them, to add new notes and also update existing ones, and then to create links and hierarchies between my notes. But I don't do all of these things or use all of these plugins for every single note that comes my way. It really just depends on what I'm going to use it for. Usually I'll pick whatever makes sense at the time and then I will try to already create something out of it. Now that might be as simple as just using Obsidian Publish to publish my notes. If you'd like to check those out, they're over here, just so you can get an idea of what kind of notes I create. Some of them are really not fully formed at all, but I like to publish them and learn in public. I also like to use microblogging sites like Mastodon and also Twitter to just kind of test ideas and then listen to the feedback that I get from people if they like it, if they agree or disagree with it, and then tailor my approach to that. I'll talk to people and see what their reactions are like. And as I go through the content creation process, I also like to try it out in different formats. So I might do it, you know, as a blog post. And if that still gets traction, then I might try it as a video or as a presentation at a conference. I think it's futile to try to come up with strict rules and steps for processing notes that might even require you to learn new terminology just to be able to implement them. Instead, I encourage you to experiment with the many options that I showed here, and then just choose one or a few of them, depending on what makes sense to you at the time. Instead of worrying about making that process absolutely consistent and treating your notes exactly the same way, I would worry about what you need to do to make those notes actually useful. To put it bluntly, fixating on methodologies without putting them into practice is not much better than intellectual masturbation. Useful at the time, but in the long term, insufficient. Thanks for watching, bedankt voor het kijken en fijn weekend!